I had been dating my boyfriend for over a year when I suspected something was up. I never took him for a cheater, but that's what he was. Looking back, all the signs were there, but I still wasn't expecting what I found out. The first thing I noticed was how he seemed to be more and more addicted to his phone. He had it with him constantly, which isn't particularly unusual, but the fact that he never left it unguarded was more of a concern. When I started to notice him taking it into the bathroom with him, I really started to wonder. I asked him about it a few times, why he would be needing it in the bathroom, and he just gave me some excuse about just keeping it on him out of habit. One time, I listened outside the bathroom door to see if I could hear him texting or the sound of one being sent. I didn't hear anything and saw that it was in his pocket when he came out. When I would sleep over at his house and we would wake up together, when he would get up for that first morning pee, the first thing he would do was grab his phone, slide it into his pajama bottom pocket and off he'd go. I felt uneasy about it, but the mind is a powerful thing and I think my mind didn't want to face the possibility of what I knew was happening. One night when he had had too much to drink and passed out, his phone was next to him on the floor. I felt bad doing this and I had most certainly never been the jealous type before, but I found myself covertly picking up that phone and going around the corner with it. I started scrolling through his Facebook messages, nothing there, just messages from friends and family and his Warhammer gaming community. I guess if anything, I was most curious about his relationship with his ex. They were friends and talked every day, which was hard. I didn't get the whole staying friends with your ex thing, but Josh was one of those guys that everyone wanted to be around and stay friends with. He had stayed friends with all his ex-girlfriends. I saw his most recent messages from her, but it was nothing inappropriate, just basic stuff. I could hear him stirring in the next room, so tiptoed back to slip his phone back to where it had been sitting. He moaned, but didn't suspect anything. I felt terrible for looking and had to ask myself if I was feeling like that because of the relationship or my own insecurities. Josh had never given me any reason to think he was a cheater. In fact, most of his girlfriends before me had broken up with him and cheated on him. Don't ask me why he wanted to stay friends after that, but he did. Josh was friends with everyone. Sometimes I legit thought he was too nice. I mean, there was being nice, and then there was being a doormat. He seemed to have a very hard time with having difficult conversations with people. Saying no seemed impossible for him. I had to admit, though, that kindness and big heart was one of the things I loved most about him. So I told myself that I couldn't pick and choose his qualities that I liked, but wanted him only to have with me and expect him not to give to others. Anyway, I tried to put my fears to rest, but I still had this nagging feeling that something was up. We were pretty much always together, and my best friend asked me when I thought he would even be finding the time to cheat. Over the next while, I told myself that if I was seriously suspicious, then I shouldn't be with him. What was the point of being with someone you couldn't trust? But the truth was I had strong, strong feelings for him and just didn't want to face the possibility of having to break up with him if I did find anything out. After I decided to let my fears drift away and trust him, things got better. I still noticed that he took his phone everywhere, but told myself that that was just who he was and a habit. Once I had finally relaxed, he started to act strange. He seemed less and less interested in touching me. I know in a relationship, it's not going to stay as hot as it was in the beginning, but we were young and hadn't been dating long enough to lose the passion. At least that's what I thought. I tried everything. I was super affectionate with him, put a ton of effort into looking my best when I knew we were seeing each other, and I even tried to spice up our love life. He always responded, but I couldn't help but think that it was out of obligation rather than actual passion and interest. I started to notice that he was on his computer a lot. I never really saw what he was doing though. It just seemed like whenever I got to his place, he was closing his laptop. He told me he was helping some friends work on writing some Warhammer campaigns, and I believed him. That night though, his phone was constantly dinging. I decided that I was going to stay awake until after he went to sleep so I could check it. 
It seemed to take forever for him to fall asleep, but when he did, I crept around to his side of the bed and grabbed the phone. I carried it upstairs and swiped his pattern to get inside. I saw his list of recent text messages, and there was a name I didn't recognize from someone called Love Guru. The messages were racy. Here we go. I had found him out. There was a last message for this person to come to Josh's place the next night. I snuck the phone back to where it had been on his bedside table and hatched my plan. The next morning, I asked Josh what he was doing the next night and told him I wanted to surprise him with special plans. He gave me all sorts of excuses, but I kept pushing just to force him into lying more and more. We left it as a no because Josh had some big deadline on a battle campaign he had to write and send off that night. At least, that's what he told me. I had a key to his place, though. The message had said the love guru was coming over at 7, and I knew Josh would be getting home from work around 6. That was a long time to hide under his bed and wait, but it would be worth it in the end to finally find out the truth and stop feeling crazy. So at 5.30, I let myself into Josh's place, locking the door behind me, and headed up the stairs to his room. I crawled under his bed and said a silent prayer of gratitude that Josh was such a clean freak and under the bed was clean. I stayed there for what felt like forever before I could hear the front door opening and Josh coming up the stairs. I could see his feet moving around the room as he cleaned it up and seemed to be setting the scene for something. He had picked things off the floor, cleaned up, straightened out his bedding, and left the room for a bit. I could see he wasn't writing for that big deadline as he had told me he would be. I looked down at my watch and could see it was almost seven. I was getting really sore and tired of waiting in the same position under the bed. Just after seven, I heard the doorbell ring. Josh went downstairs and answered it. I could just hear muffled voices, but no details. Whoever it was, they were hanging out downstairs and thought to myself, what if they came and left without even coming upstairs? Then I guess that meant they weren't cheating. I told myself to be patient and that they had just arrived. Around a half hour later, I could hear footsteps coming up the stairs, but no talking. I was shocked when I could see two sets of feet coming into the room standing close to each other. At first, there was silence, and then the sounds of kissing. I put my hand over my mouth to stifle the crying. Then I heard them sit down on the bed. I could see clothes dropping on the floor into a couple of piles. I turned my head as I didn't really want to see anything else. I could hear moaning and wondered why it only seemed to be Josh but not the other girl. Then I suddenly realized both the moans sounded like men. I listened harder and could clearly hear two manly moans. I reached out to the shirt that had dropped on the floor in front of me that wasn't Josh's. It was definitely a man's shirt. I couldn't believe my eyes. This was way worse than I thought. Not only was he cheating, he was cheating with a man. Things were making sense. Why he was seeming less and less interested in me. Why he was always so busy and tuned into his phone. Had he been gay all the time or was this just some kind of experiment? It seemed like everyone at my school was gay or gender fluid. It was cool to be part of a sexual minority these days, and I felt a lot of kids just wanted to try everything so they could say they had. I didn't think Josh was like that though, and thinking about his personality, it did seem very possible that he was gay and had been from the start. After they were finished, I could finally hear them talking, and yup, it was definitely two men. They talked casually about life, movies, and getting together again in a couple of days. Josh walked him to the door, said goodbye, and stayed downstairs. How long was I supposed to stay here for? Even though I had caught him and he was in the wrong, I still didn't want to confront him. He was my best friend and I didn't want to lose him. I didn't want to end up just another ex-friend. I wanted more than that from him. But it's not like I could force him to not be gay. I crawled out from under the bed, and when I could hear that he had gone into the kitchen, I crept out the front door. As I was halfway home, I got a message from Josh that made me cry. It said, hey beautiful, how goes the day? I loved how he talked to me. Everything he said was sweet and complimentary. How could I lose him? The tears started to flow as I considered how to respond. 
I stared at that text message for almost an hour before my anger and hurt kicked in. I wrote back, I've been better to be honest. Where were you tonight? Were you alone? I have a feeling you're not being honest with me. The radio silence of half an hour after sending that message seemed like the longest in the world. When my phone rang, I knew it was him, and he asked if we could meet and talk. I knew what was coming, but agreed. We met up and he confessed everything, that he was gay, that he hadn't known when we first got together, and that he liked a guy he had met online and been with. I was relieved he told me the truth, and we held each other and promised to stay friends. I will say, it's a year later, and Josh is my full-on best gay friend. It wasn't the relationship I wanted, but it was an authentic friendship I knew I'd have forever. And that's nothing to shake a stick at. To watch more animated story videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And tell us in the comments section what you thought about this story.